How are we? Episode 35, Chat and Pony with Paddy the Baddy. Um, once again, as always, we're sponsored by Flux. Got the tracky on today, not just the t-shirt, full tracky. All the grippers on the website and on the Instagram. Go and give them a follow, give them a look. They've always supported the podcast. But today, we have an absolute legend of, uh, of the Muay Thai sport, of combat sports in general, to be honest. So... Introduce yourself, Liam. Uh, thanks for having me, mate. I'm Liam Harrison from the Bad Company Gym in Leeds, eight-time World Muay Thai champion. You can't say much better than yeah, that. Yeah, you know, you know eight-time yeah, World Muay Thai champion. Detail, but I think that explains <laughs> it all, I think. Oh, lad, I always go back to the start with everyone. Every podcast I start, I always say, how did you get into what you're doing? So how did you get into Muay Thai? So you know my cousin, Andy. You've yeah. done a bit of work with him, don't you? My cousin had just started at Bad Company in Leeds. Um, I was 13. He's a bit older than me. I think he was about 17, 18. And he just said, oh, I found this uh, gym. He said, it's fucking ace. He said, I've never no, never seen out like it before. It's called Thai boxing. Have you heard of it? And I'd never even heard what it was. Yeah. I know what kickboxing was. I'd seen the movie Kickboxing with John Claude Was, was Richard the coach back then Richard still too? Richard's still the coach. Still a coach yeah. So Richard's run that gym since 1992. 92? Yeah. That, like, nearly 30, 30 yeah, years this year. Yeah. That's, 30 years. That's brilliant, that. So I'd been playing a lot of football and stuff at the time. I'm I were in a bit of a rough area at Leeds. My school were a bit rough and I thought, you know what, go down there, learn how to fight and that because I was just getting to an age where 13, people are fighting and scrapping. Yeah, yeah, it's just... When you're from an area like that, if you don't know how to fight, you'll get bullied and eaten alive. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, I'll go down, I'll give it a go. It might help a bit of fitness for me, football and stuff like that. And I walked into gym and I smelt that, you know, the, the, yeah. the tie oil smell that you smell in the gym. <laughs> if no one knows what that is. It's like a liniment that everyone just wears and it just like, obviously you won't be able to do it in MMA because you'll be yeah. rubbing on in your eyes and that. But like in Thai boxing gym, everyone just wears his liniment and then it's just got a real distinctive smell. I smell all that. And I seen um, a couple of geezers who I think at the time they were British champion and I seen them in the pads and stuff and then the crack of the kicks and I thought, fucking hell, this looks, this looks all right. So I started, I had a few sessions and I enjoyed it. Yeah. But it wasn't until about a month in and I got to spa and me and Andy got to spa and we had all pads on, big gloves, shin pads, and we just kicked fuck out of each other basically. <laughs> and we were like, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> and then I was I was hooked. Um, and I had my first amateur fight after about six months. But I was big for my age. I mean, I only fight at 145 now. And I'm, that's hydrated that I fight at 145. Yeah. I think my first fight were at like 130. So it's not too much of a big weight difference. Yeah. I was like 14 or 13, 13 at the time for amateurs. See, I'm the opposite to you there. Yeah. Like I was a little kid yeah. and then I've grew. But you know I mean, I, and you've well, stayed like a I mean, I just got to this size, man. I thought, oh, fucking, I'm 13. Pretty big here. I'll be all right. <laughs> I'm going to be fucking big. Nah, didn't, didn't fucking grow anymore. <laughs> so I had my first fight and it just felt horrible with all padding on and stuff like yeah. that. So then my second fight, I was 14. I said, Richard, I'm not putting all them pads on again. I said, I'm not, I'm just not fucking doing it. So we just had to like, I looked a little bit older. He said, what's live? Was he 16? So in them first amateur, did you have like shinies and elbow pads on? Shinies, elbow pads, knee pads guard, as well. Body pad. A body pad yeah, on as well? A body pad, mate. It was like full amateur. So like full amateur rules. So in Muay Thai, full amateur in the IFMA tournament, tournaments, you have to wear out the body pad, head guard, elbow pads. I felt like a fucking turtle, mate. When it's on his back <laughs> and it can't get up. I remember I got kicked, I got teeped on the floor and I couldn't get, it took me about 10 minutes to get up. And I said to Richard, I mean, I can't do that again. I just didn't enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Well, I enjoyed the. The, I won the fight and I enjoyed all that and I just didn't, it felt wrong. You know, I did, didn't feel right. Yeah. Especially with how aggressive I like to fight and stuff like that. And then we just lied about my age after that. We said, oh, <laughs> I said he's 16 and then I just started fighting older opponents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so my, my first pro fight where I actually got paid, I got 30 quid on now. Remember, imagine, being, I got 30 ma imagine quid. being 14 and someone gives you 30 quid. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> Straight down park, bottle of fucking vodka or something. Yeah. On roundabout. So I, I remember that. So that first fight there, Richard went, right, this gym's got a 16 year old. Well, say you're 16, you can fight like, yeah. it's like sort of basically pro, but with no elbows. Yeah. So no shins, gloves only. I was, like, I was buzzing. So I remember we went to the, the weigh-in for the fight. I've got on the scales. My opponent got on scales. I looked at him and I thought, well, I look old for me, my age. He looks like well older than me. Mate, he walked outside. He jumped in his Golf GTI and drove off. I'm like, he's not fucking 16. How old's this guy? And I think it turned out he was 19. 18 yeah, or something. 19. 19, it turned out he won. I was 14. Uh, but I knocked him out in first round. Boom. Yeah, just about to say, just like, how, did, how did the fight pan out? Yeah. Knocked him out in the first round. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So that matters. And then at I that, know what, at the time, he probably thought, oh my God, I've been knocked out by a 14-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Now well, he probably bounces down a and leads. 
Ja, ja. Fest af pæssel lige meget sådan noget. Ja, ja, ja. Fest af pæssel lige meget sådan noget. Fest af pæssel lige meget sådan noget. Jeg remember, I thought, when I was 15, I thought this kid who was 29, and he were a kickboxing world champion. He, he'd never fought Thai boxing, no, so he, yeah. never, he didn't know about leg kicks. I stopped him in round two with leg kicks. We went upstairs to the bar, and he went, oh, I'll buy you a beer. I went, oh, I'll have a pint. And the one served me at the bar because he didn't have no idea. He went, how old are you? He went, I went, I'm 15. Mate, he had a tear rolling down his he face. Was like, he was like, hey, He went, I can't show my face anymore around here. I went, mate, don't worry. Everyone thinks I'm 18 or something. Don't worry about it, mate. <laughs> That's quality, <laughs> that, you know. You know what? I felt, after, I felt fucking ace when I won the fight. And I actually felt a bit bad for a, for him. a split second afterwards. Yeah. And then I walked out like, oh, fucking all right. Yeah. Right, yeah. I just done a 29 year old. That's it. Like, I know what you mean. It was my first fight. I was 16 and fourth, a 24 year old. Yeah. Like in MMA, like, I bet you it was like that with Ty back then. There was hardly anyone about fighting. Exactly. When I first started fighting, there wasn't really that many people about. So you just had to fight who got put in front of you. Well, that's the thing now. We've been in Thai boxing, like all these... The little taunts. I always see Richard's lads doing yeah. the um, the tournaments. Yeah, that's and... good for the juniors. They're always in these and stuff like that. But then you get to a certain age now, there's well, so many big shows and out there. You can get catapulted on like the world stage yeah. pretty easy without having the, the in-ring experience. See, when I was fighting, I was fighting, like, when I was coming up, I was in working men's clubs full of smoke and shit like yeah. that. You know, like, obviously, you can't smoke inside now, but you could then. I remember some of the shows I fought, I used to fight on my, like, you'd go to a, a working men's club, you'd have a gentleman's show, they'd have two Thai boxing fights, then strippers on straight afterwards. <laughs> I mean, I was 15 year old, this was the best time of my life, mate. That. I, honestly, it was the best time of my life. They used to get people on stage and that. And I'm like, oh, Richard, can I get on stage? You <laughs> fucking cut. But um, it was like... Every weekend I was fighting almost because I wasn't picking up too many injuries. I was young, I could shake them off at least once a month. I yeah. went there every month, getting in-ring experience. So by the time that I was stepping up against the more experienced fighters, I had the in-ring experience that a lot of these guys don't, aren't having these days. Yeah, like A lot of fighters now, like um, Haggerty, for instance, is a great fighter, but he's just getting thrown in now because he's, he's won at top level, but he's going to have to go in there every single time at that level now. And sometimes he's not going to have that experience, which I'd like to have seen... Fighters like him fight more regular because he's coming in against two people who got two hundred fights, and I think John's only had about twenty five fights. Don't get me wrong; he's a fucking animal and he's beating a lot of these guys. But it would have been nice just to see him fight a bit more regular and before yeah. he got thrown onto that world. Yeah, stage. obviously, the more fights you get, the more fight IQ and yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, and he's already an absolute animal. Yeah, like, so I like, watched some of John's stuff. He's yeah, an absolute animal. <laughs> so imagine him with the experience of like a fifty extra fights or something. Yeah, like, that'd be scary. But like I say. I, He's smashing it, and but I think like the fights against Rod Tang, where he lost, I think if he'd have had that bit of extra experience, he would have won. won. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the thing I think now a lot of Thai boxers are probably doing, they're probably thinking less damage, yeah. less fights. You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. that's what I say. You know, when boxers come up to me and go, it's a man sport, that MMA. I go, did you ever watch Thai boxing? Yeah. Like, that's a fucking man sport. They stand this far away from each other and just punch, kick, knee and elbow each other for 15 minutes. Yeah. And like you say, like especially like the ties and stuff. Like by the time they've had been been fighting for two years, they fought every month. They've had like two yeah. years. They've had like what thirty. And some of them have been years. fighting since he was about eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And when they're that age, they will fight every every weekend, week to, every to, weekend to get the dough in for money. the family, won't they? Exactly, mate. Exactly. But like you say, like over here, it, it was just like working men's clubs one week, a sports all the, the a couple of week after. If I had no injuries, I'd be back in the working men's clubs. Yeah. So by the time I was like. 16, 17, and I'd almost 30 fights. Yeah. So I'd just been fighting like every Constantly. month. Every month if I could, yeah. That is boss that though, you know, like I love fighting, lad. That's mm. what I like doing. I like fighting. So I just wish I just wish MMA was like that, where you could yeah. fight that more. I know you can, but the way we lose weight and that, you just can't. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's totally different. Yeah, it's like, totally at, different. at that time when I were I was that young as well, I won't really I didn't really yeah, have to didn't lose in. any weight. Yeah, I was like 60 from well, 14 to about 19, and when I was 19, my metabolism just stopped and I turned into a little fat cunt. <laughs> I did. I did. I think that happened to us all. Why can't I make weight anymore? And I, I, and I had to like proper like change on my diet yeah. and everything like that. And then that happened again when I got to 25, because when I got from 19 to 25, I thought, right, I can sort of eat what I want still, how long I'm training hard. Yeah. Then when I got to 25, I missed weight twice. And I'm thinking, hey, what's happening here? And I just realized I just couldn't live how I was. Yeah. Just like, you know, getting away with stuff like that. And, in Thai boxing, it's hard to do them big, big weight cuts like you MMA guys. But no, at least you guys know what you're doing now. Yeah. Back then, it was just like, oh, what should we do? I don't know, getting a sauna. Just getting a sauna. Getting a, sauna. a fucking yeah. sauna for as getting long as you can. Getting a sauna and sweat as much as you can. Yeah, out. exactly, basically, yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, I love watching it on these one FCs now, though, lad. No, the 
the f- them four ounce gloves. Yeah. Like that last fight you had is going to be fight of the year. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, do you know what? I thought I'm 36 now. I thought, say to myself, right, I've had some crazy wars from my time. Surely that's behind me now and I can fight a bit more smarter. <laughs> no. 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 And then I go and do something like that. Absolutely. <laughs> but I just got caught cold earlier. What's that war? Like, I'm still learning out of fighting MMA gloves. Yeah, it's different, it's isn't it? It's totally different yeah. to what I'm... I've had 117 pro fights in normal gloves. So for someone to just take them off you and put them tiny little MMA gloves on you, and people don't realise how, like, there's nothing there's in not them. There's nothing there, yeah, no. nothing like, there whatsoever. People think that them gloves is to protect the other person's head. It's not. It's just make sure you don't break your hand. Yeah, That's yeah. That's all them gloves are exactly. for. Exactly. Because if you do it bare knuckle, you'll break your hand a lot easier. Exactly. That's literally all they're for. So the stuff that I would do in a, in a, a fight with big gloves that won't work in them little gloves. So I'm yeah. it's like trial and error as I'm going. Obviously I'm trying different stuff out in the gym, but it's not, it's different when someone's in front of you trying yeah. to fucking kick you on elbow and punch you full power. So I had made that mistake early on in that fight. I tried to catch a kick like that. And obviously there's no protection there's there. There's no pardon so there, So he yeah. shinned me on front of the chin and dropped me. And then when I got up, he just ran in and launched himself at me and yeah. dropped me again. And then by that time I thought, oh fuck. Three, it's knock, on. three knockdowns. I'm and it's over, yeah. I've yeah, got to yeah. fucking go I for thought, it. right, just, Bite down. <laughs> well, <laughs> Let's have it. That I can. That got put in our group chat, and I was like, I was sitting there watching it going. <laughs> what? what? I had to put it on on the telly after it because the phone weren't good yeah. enough. <laughs> no, because the phone's only that big. I had to put it on the telly and like proper watch it. Uh, so after and the, the f- shots that you landed. Yeah, yeah. Well, after the fight, like my mum and my fiance and everyone, and me, even my dad were like, "Fucking hell!" I nearly had an heart attack. My mum were crying and all sorts. A few of my friends. Messaged me and went, I can't believe it. I said, I turned it off after the second knockdown. I said, I didn't want to see you get knocked out. Yeah. I didn't want to see you get stopped because I know how hard you've trained for that fight. I knew you had the, the title shot if you won coming after it. I said, I, just, I didn't want to look at you getting stopped. I said, you had no fucking faith in me, did you? Is that what it was? <laughs> you cheeky you bastard. bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no faith whatsoever. Yeah, you left me high and dry. But yeah, yeah literally, mate, about four or five of my friends said that, so we turned it off, so we couldn't, we couldn't watch. Oh, that they must feel a cunt, though. Yeah, though. I'm that telling that you, was, yeah. I'd be fuming there if I was them. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, how have I just missed that? Yeah. How have I just missed that live? Am I, I messing? Know. To be fair, I might have turned it off, though, if I did do it. Because <laughs> I can understand why people that did do it, because it looked like the writing were on the wall for me, to be <laughs> yeah. fair. But yeah. Like, as I say, lad, them, them four ounce glove tie fights, like, they are so entertaining, yeah. but it, it's, it's just mad to watch. That like, obviously, like I was saying about how, how many fights I had when I was growing up, if you, you can't fight like that. In yeah, no, you can't fight like that. Your hands like, even in your like, face. Even and, like catching and covering. Yeah, it's not. There's just no pattern there to, to, nothing, to actually cover stuff. Nothing whatsoever. Like hands, I bet you a few people's hands have been broken that oh, one. Man, man, man getting kicked. Yeah, man Getting folk, kicked, man. I mean, yeah, like that. Yeah, 100%. Where you used to block it with even, a even if you're just covering up and if someone f- full power yeah. hook or something onto your hand, it's going to... Because I couldn't, the first time I put them gloves on, I, I don't I couldn't believe it. I was like, fucking hell, how do they do this shit in UFC? And then someone punched me in the face one. I was like, nah, that was fucking ridiculous. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time in a fight, I stepped in to throw a jab against a tie and he jabbed at the same time and I stepped right into it and it felt like a, a straight right hand. Yeah. No, because it was just Just like, knuckle. Bong. Just yeah. felt the knuckle right yeah. through. It's funny, you know, do you say that? Because when I put, when I take like, the UFC gloves, I don't even cage all these gloves, to me boxing coach and then my bag, he'll put them on and be like... Yeah, yeah. It's funny, he's like... <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll take over the world with these yeah, on, lad. He's yeah. hilarious. He's like, oh, these, these are mad. Having these on, these are mad. He, yeah. loves, he just loves putting them on. They're ridiculous. And like, it, it, they make, even someone who aren't in a big puncher, they make him a big puncher. Yeah. Like, the guy I fought, he's not renowned for uh, being a big puncher, but he's sat me straight on my ass with that left, Shit. that straight left hand. Shin to the chin, the first yeah, difference, yeah. Though, Shin yeah. to the chin. Yeah, true. That, that obviously not... rattled your brain first, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Like... I always say that egg kicks. I always think back to the Leoto. Obviously, when Machida does it to Munoz, yeah, it's yeah, lit his yeah. guards up. Yeah, he kicks him and he's still unconscious. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like, because like you say, your foot can wrap around back at neck. A bit of shin can hit you on front yeah. of chin or head. Yeah, it's dangerous. Like like I say, I'm, I mean, it's still trial and error for me in them gloves. But yeah. obviously, my next fight's for one one championship, so I'm gonna have to get my fucking finger out and <laughs> make no. I can't make no mistakes against the the champion in that because he will turn me lights out because he's an absolute beast. But like I say, I, I punch really hard. So if you put me in them gloves and you let me land, I will not yeah, spark out. Yeah, you will, definitely, yeah, yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. Like I remember watching that fight back. Um, it was the you lost the decision, but you proper put it on him in the third round. Oh, yeah. That was a boss fight so as well. So that was against a tie called Rodlick. So in that fight... Rodlick, that was it. Yeah, Rodlick. yeah. So in that fight, three months prior to that, I'd had my first knee surgery. And they said, right, by 12 weeks' time, you will be able to start training properly. 12 weeks' time, you were fighting. 
four weeks time I'd started my fight camp but most of my fight camp were trying to get my legs strong enough to be able to fucking yeah you know because I'd been on crutches I'd had an operation and this quad had turned into like a jockey's whip and this one were massive. So I had to spend all my fight camp building this leg back up. And then it turned out I had about four or five week. There were no game plan because yeah. in that four or five week, I just had to try and get myself in shape enough to fight. And round one started pretty even round one. And round two, he fucking dropped me. By the end of round well, that, two, it's the the one thing I always think from that fight is that elbow you land. Yes, yeah, yeah. That is, <laughs> lad, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> so I can remember that happening and going to say, "Oh, lad, have you seen what he done?" Yeah. Well, he would, he would like he would like a Terminator with Rodlick. And yeah, you hit some with some oh, shots and, he, and the leg, his leg was. If that was a five round fight, I oh, yeah. would have definitely would have won. One it. more, I only needed one yeah, more round because his leg was on its ass. Exactly. He swapped stance towards the end. Yeah, he, he, he switched he, stance and everything towards the end. I went to get a photo with him in the back afterwards. I went, oh, can we get a photo? And he was sat in a chair and he went, I can't get up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Fair play to him because he was laughing at me yeah. and taunting me and goading me. Like, he reminds you a bit of Rod Tang him. Yeah, well, like, they are very, very similar styles. Like, Rod Tang said he, like, modelled himself on Rod Lick. On Rod Lick, yeah. 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 That's quality, though. Yeah. Like... I proper enjoyed One FC, lad. I do. I really like watching it and the MMA. I really yeah, like yeah. watching the MMA there. And obviously, I love the hydration system, what they do. You know what I mean, the weight, the weight cutting system. I, well, I think they had, they had someone who died trying to make weight, didn't they? And, they? and then they said, listen, we're not having this anymore. Yeah. We do the hydration. So basically, you've got, you have to, you get piss tested before you get on the scales. Yeah. So if you don't pass hydration, you can't even weigh in. So you have to go away and make sure you like, have a drink yeah, and then weigh in again. Fully, you're fully yeah. hydrated and stuff like that. Like it's just, it's mad because I, I obviously I'm, I'm no scientist. I don't really understand how it works properly. But like, when I see Mighty Mouse fight that, was it Fernandez? Oh, like, yeah. He looks like different weight classes. Yeah, he's massive, him. He's, he's fucking massive, huge. Mate. Like when he need him, he need him in face. Yeah, when he yeah, need him yeah. in the face. Yeah. Like, I, I think them rules should be in the UFC. Yeah, I, you know, I, I like them rules, like but them. like... I, I, that might have been some of the Mighty Mouse weren't used to that. Because yeah, that was that. Yeah, he said yeah. that after it, didn't he? Yeah, like yeah. He said himself after he's like, I, I like these reels. Yeah. He's like, I've never had to think about that yeah. before, so I've never worried you, about it. How many fights did he have in UFC? He had 15, 16 or whatever. Uh, it's something like that, and he won um, all, all, all title defenses. And he, that, he, he's got the most title defense yeah. there, I think 11 or 12. Yeah, it's ridiculous. 11 or so 12. If you've been set into that rule set for so long, it only takes a split second, and you think, oh, I don't have to worry about that. Bang! And then I, I, like, I, I love proud reels. We'll never see them again. Stomps oh, no. and egg kicks, but like Not knees, chance, yeah. knees. I think we should have them in. Yeah, because people stall in some positions where you could throw knees. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree with that totally. That's the opposite thing with tight. There's no stall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. <laughs> in, in those little gloves, and because they only do it over three rounds, you've got no feeling out. You've yeah, got to just get in there, which is like. I, well, I slipped up in my last fight. I got caught cold early. I was still trying to have a look, and I got caught. Bang! Can't afford to do that. Yeah. And, like I said, I learned the hard way then, and luckily I brought I brought the fight back and I won. But there'd have been fighters there, they'd been trying to do something, and they'd been wiped out. So as you say, it literally only is three three minute rounds. Yeah, like it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. three three minute rounds. It's not a long time, but when you've but got them is. gloves on and you you got in, you're in there like every fighter on one championship who's in the tie boxing and the kickboxing divisions, they are the most elite strikers on yeah. the planet. Like stand up. They ain't got no mugs in there. There's no easy fights. So if you make one mistake in them small gloves against yeah, somebody, get, yeah, you get beat. Yeah, yeah. Like I know, and you always look at like some of the best, like the best tie boxers ever. They've all got loads of losses. Yeah, of course. No yeah. one ever goes undefeated because they fight that much. There's too many ways to and lose. There's too many ways yeah, to lose. Yeah. yeah. And like you say, like if you've had like Sanchai, the greatest fighter, definitely of this generation, possibly of all time, he's got 50 losses on his record, 300 wins, 50 losses. Yeah. Like I said, there's too many ways to lose. And like, say you fight that regularly, you're bound to have an off day. If you're fighting every single month, yeah, it's like you're gonna have an off day here and there. Like we're gonna have to talk about how bad my tie record is. So, uh-huh. yeah, funny, you know, I'm 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 all and three my tie me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you fought Jack Kennedy, didn't you? Yeah, I yeah, fought yeah. Sean Gilmartin twice. No, Remember, he used to fight with Fitz yeah, Sai. Yeah. Like I fought Sean twice. The first one was a very close fight. I fought a one, so we had a rematch in the second one. He just schooled me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. absolutely muay tied me up, kept clinching me, yeah, kept just yeah. staying away like. Well, you're not good at clinch because it jits and now. We're not doing jits. I'm more of a takedown. Ah, right, so if yeah, I get yeah. in the clinch, I like taking people yeah, down. Yeah. Like the first fight, he beat me. I can remember going. I, I remember going over and asking the judge why he won, and he said in the fourth round. He kicked it in the back. Ah, he said, but yeah. That's why yeah, I lost yeah. the fight. He said in the fourth round, I threw like a hook and missed, missed and he him. kicked me. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Said, and like, I was like, what? He won the fight because of that? Because yeah. I didn't really understand the ruling. But then like, when I fought Jack Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, Jack's a good fight. That's man. what I mean. I He's took a that, very good I just fight, took yeah. that fight on like two weeks notice yeah. because I, um, I was meant to fight MMA and the show was meant to be in Afghanistan. Yeah. At the time, because it was the Jordanian, Jordanian royal family what owned the um, cage at the time. There was a show in Afghanistan, 
and I wanted to fight on it, obviously. And my mum and dad said no. My mum and dad like, no, you're not fighting on it. Yeah. So I was like, Sam didn't fight on it. So that tie fight come up, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I had the first round, I just, and like the worst thing about it, that cage where he's got moved to Qatar. Yeah, fucking hell. That show ended up being in Qatar, <laughs> yeah. not Afghanistan. And um, I can remember coming out at Jack, first round, I just tried to take his head off, literally. Just, that's all I've done, just walk forward, swinging, lad. I nearly got him out of there, but obviously he was resilient. Yeah. He, he just Mate, kept, he he's kept going. He's renowned for yeah, doing that. He, he soaks up punishment for two rounds, I and then he goes on a mission. Bad for a, yeah. a full round. I just walk forward boxing yeah. and tried to take his head off. And then the second round, I have tried to do a similar thing and started to gas. Lad. <laughs> what, did he need to clinch you up and knee you? The third, fourth yeah. and fifth round, he just beat me up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm he's never, a good fighter. Oh, he's quite, I'll never forget it one because we were doing B-class. You couldn't elbow to the head. Yeah. And... At one point, I'm just stuck in the corner, covering, covering, and he stepped through and elbowed me in the chest. Yeah. And I've went to the ref. <laughs> and he's just went back and left. <laughs> and I've just had to cover and just start swinging back. Like, I didn't know, like, you could elbow to the body. Yeah, you can to the body. That's quite yeah, that, you know. Go on, but you just mentioned something then about the, the rules and you asked the judge about getting kicked across the back. Yeah. I remember when I first went, and when I moved to Thailand, the, first, well, the second fight I'd ever lost. The Thai took my back in the clinch in round four. Other than that, I'd pretty much battered him. But I lost and I got out of the ring. I went, I went to my coach. I went, how the fuck did I lose that? I said, I won every round. He went, you're giving me back. I said, why did no one ever tell me about this? He said, I, I, said, I didn't know this. And yeah. in England, I said, this isn't really a thing. I said, why haven't you ever told me? He said, I thought you knew. You let him be, you, you turned into a lady boy for him. That's what he said to me. That's what they call it. Don't be a lady boy. Don't let him get That's you back. That's what he says. That's yeah, what he yeah. says. Yeah, you turn to a lady boy. Don't be a lady boy. Don't be a lady boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, didn't fuck, <laughs> did, I didn't fucking know. But yeah, so <laughs> you give your back. Like, obviously, Muay Thai it scored effect, dominance, ring craft, etc. If you just give your back up in the clinch and they get around the back here, that's showing massive effect and dominance on them. And the Thais said, "That's it, that's what the Thais called it, saying don't be a lady boy. Don't let him. Don't be a lady boy for him." Yeah. Lad, so that's I lost crazy, the fight for it. it. Yeah, and, it, and you battered him for five rounds, but he got you back at one, one point. One two pretty even. I won three. I was winning four until he took my back. And then in five, he went on the back foot. So he obviously knew he'd done that to win. I think, why is he on back foot? He should be coming for the fight. But yeah, and there you go. That yeah, is you're madness. Lesson learned, mate. They yeah, are, lesson mate. learned. Lesson learned. Don't, don't be a lady boy. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Like, that, it's half. I have be a lady boy for people because <laughs> the way we grapple. Yeah, I'll do that sometimes. I'll let people on me back and I'll reverse them using it. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? But obviously in Thai, that's different. That's madness. That, like that was one thing that my head fell off. I was like, "What do you mean I lost because he kicked me in the back?" Yeah, you know what I mean. I was like, "That makes no sense." Yeah, well, so it, and no one had ever told me that in England. Like, yeah, obviously. I didn't. I was like, "What do you mean he kicked me in the back?" So I lost the fight. I was like, "I was punching him in the face." Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. What do you mean? I was like, "I'm punching him in the face and I'm kicking him and like, but he wins because he kicks me in the back." Yeah. Oh, oh, it's mad. <laughs> that Jack Kennedy one, though, I swear to God. That, <laughs> after the second so, round... I think he just... actually put, he put that on his Instagram not long back, did Jack? I think. I, remember, I said, no, I never, he, I never realised for, an, for another three rounds, he absolutely muffed me. Yeah. <laughs> just absolutely yeah, muffed me. I know, guy. I've watched since, since then, obviously, at the time, we was only kids. I think he's like a year or two older than me, so yeah. we was only like 18, 19 at the time. Yeah. And... Uh, I've watched some of his fights recently. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's a good that fighter. That boy man. can scrap, yeah, lad. He can, he can scrap. And really, it's his elbows, isn't it? Yeah, he's he can get really his elbows from anywhere. Knee and elbow. Yeah. So he'll just, he'll take punishment for the early rounds. And then as soon as you start to like tire out a little bit, he'll gauge it and he'll go, right, I'm, my, I'm coming. I watched one of his fights. Knee, is it last year where he drew? He drew yeah. with someone and it was an absolute oh, yeah. scrap. Good, the, the Scottish kid, yeah. Brian Totty, it was. Lad. That was a really good fight. It was a proper scrap. Yeah. That's why I always say to people, like I always say to you, when people say to me, oh, it's a man sport, that I'm like, have you ever watched Thai boxing? Yeah. As a lad, like the the way you kick, I swear to God. <laughs> Even like being in the gym, would you? When I was been bad company a few years back and just watching you the pads, you're just like... Yeah, everything I... Well, I use, I use my pad work for like my fitness and my stamina and stuff like that. And everyone goes, well, it's not, you can't do that when he fights. I'm like, well, obviously I'm not going to do it like that when I yeah. fight. But if I can like get myself to that level of fitness and stamina on the pads and I can use my power for that long on the pads from round one to round five and be aggressive. Obviously, it is going to be quite effective yeah. to do that when I fight. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be sport specific when I fight. Obviously, I'm not going to... You can't just do that 
when you fight because hitting the pads, no one's hitting your back. Yeah, no one's hitting your back. Yeah, so you have to think about what you're doing, but it's still good for me stamina and stuff like that. Yeah, which, there's which is, cardio which is and... why I hit the pads like that. Plus, it just feels fucking good. It just feels good <laughs> when you whack the pads like that. And everyone goes, why do you have to scream like that? Listen, if I want to scream, I'll fucking scream. Yeah, if I yeah, want to yeah, scream, yeah, I'll yeah, scream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, when I was there last time and uh, Andy went, video that for us when you were hitting pads and I started video and then Andy went, I think oh, you or Andy went, Make sure the clock's in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people say to Liam, you, you're fast forward that. All the time, mate. I get <laughs> trolled to fuck right yeah, doing that. So I have to mention, I've got an angle now where, 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 where anyone's filming me on the pads, I make sure the clock's in the background. Yeah. It's always on countdown. Even a few people say, anyone could just edit that so the clock's... I thought, who do you think I am? I'm a computer whiz. I'm That's a fucking I'm, professional I'd... fighter, mate. I said, that. I have a bad enough time <laughs> uploading this clip I to Instagram. Can't, I can't even use Photoshop. Yeah, I'm telling you. I couldn't put someone's face up. People send me pictures of my face on other people, and I'm just like, lad, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One that sent me the other day that... Um, a, what, like a, a woman in a Liverpool top who's about 17 stone with my face on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, how are you even doing that? You know what I mean, how is that possible? Same, I, I don't know how to do any of that shit. I'm terrible mate. with technology, so I'm mate. not going to get, get a clock in the background, get the clock on normal time, but I'm still on fast forward. But you know what it's like when all these people, yeah. the, you must get some right lad, shit. I can't, I can't. Mate. I can't help but respond, lad. I'm Mate, bad. Yeah, I'm you. I need to stop responding, lad. Same. And the thing is, it wastes about... I, next Hours thing a I know, day, oh, lad. Next thing I know, I've, I've replied to a few of them and then I'm arguing with some guy and I've wasted like an lad, hour. Lad, yesterday you know I mean? was on my phone for hours. I'm not even a lie, lad. Yesterday. <laughs> I quote tweeted a tweet and it was a boxer and it was a tweet to do with the Queen. Yeah. Something to do with the Queen. And I said, oh, he's a tool him. Mm. And then everyone started jumping on me and I'm like, <laughs> why is all jumping on me? It was Tommy Coyle, his dad had died the night before. Oh, yeah, yeah. So everyone's on me saying, why are you saying this about him? His dad's just died. And I'm like, it's nothing to do with his dad. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what had happened to his yeah, dad. Yeah, of course, yeah. All day yesterday, lad. <laughs> like, literally, I finished training at like 12, quoted the dad at half 12. Like, 10 minutes later, my phone's blowing up. I'm like... What's going on here? Yeah. Well, I'd, <laughs> I'd have a quick look. Yeah, I had a quick Two look. Later, that yeah, was it. Like, yeah. I had a quick look. End up getting to boxing late. Come down here. When I got home, lad, I got home, took the dog for a run and went for me tea. And I went to look at my phone, lad. I was on my phone till like half 12. Yeah. Serious. <laughs> Mate, you sound exactly like lad. me. Our last looks at me, she can see me. She's going, My baby was there. You're fucking doing it my again. My baby was fuming going, last night. What? Because I was taking yeah. to take the dog for a run. I went to the dog, trying to go for a run. And he was like, Yeah. And then like he stepped standing by the door going, like, yeah. <laughs> And my baby's going, Fucking get off your phone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just end up taking the dog for a walk. Get off your phone. You've said to me I'm going to take him for a run. I'm like, I know, lad. Yesterday I was running. I was only with the dog, only 12 minute miles, lad. I'm like that. Yeah. Or <laughs> droplets of sweat landed yeah. on me. <laughs> Absolutely fuming. Lad, as just well. fuming. Lad, yeah. I couldn't stop. But oh. that's the thing, mate. I've, I've, I've tried, to, I've sort of realised that, like, the more it, time you give them people, or if you look at state of them as well, it's people. I don't know where I they like get five the, followers, This is like me and you, right? Well, I don't know if you're any good at snooker, but I'm shy. It's like yeah, me I'm and you <laughs> going to Stephen Hendry and going, you, you're chalking your cue wrong, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, t you took that shot all wrong. Should have gone for Brown there, mate. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't fucking have the audacity. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dream that no, someone who's good at a great snooker player, why would I go on and comment on their shot going, oh, you did that wrong, when yeah. I don't know shit about it. And you look at these people and look, I go on and some of them got 100 followers. You can tell they've never been in a gym or there's a video of them kicking bag and they're all eh. do you know what I mean and just, I think how have you got the fucking cheek to and even I, say anything yeah and I shouldn't waste my time I shouldn't but I do I yeah, do yeah, yeah. that's what I mean I'm bad for it like the, I know what you mean there though. like the, they're even funnier ones are the one on the ones on the internet uh, when you're on a night out yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> how funny are them people lad <laughs> Get you in a headlock, lad. Oh, man. That fight, lad, you should have done this and then done that. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like and sometimes I go, how many fights have you had, yeah. lad? How many, how many that, fights yeah. have you had? <laughs> I get, I, no, I put seminar clips up all the time and stuff like that of me doing techniques in seminars and that, which is all, one of the reasons why I started from a website putting the clip of me showing the technique and then showing it of it working in a fight. Because I'll put a technique video up and then they'll go, won't work, that. Won't work. Yeah. I'm like, oh my fucking god, and that that pisses me off. And then it takes me ages getting it. it like I said, I'm shit with technology. It takes me about fucking four hours to edit a video again of me doing that shit. <laughs> but I do it, and I think right, I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna post it up of it working in a fight. Tag the guy in it. Nah, still not convinced. I just think, oh fuck off. There's trolls, mate. Yeah, That's their are. job. It's their That's job like, to troll. So a few people said it yesterday to me. A few people said it on Twitter. They were like, I don't even know why you give your time to these yeah. people. And about seven different people said them. I was like, no what? 
why do I? <laughs> and I don't even know why I do yeah. it. I don't, lad. And you right. probably don't yourself. Don't know why I do it, but I can't help it. Yeah, same. But like, I've stopped doing it on Instagram now. I don't do it at all on yeah. Instagram because I've had two accounts stuck. Yeah, so I, you yeah, can't afford to I can't, get, I can't yeah, afford yeah, to get that stuck again. I finally got more followers than I had when it got stuck yeah, last. Yeah, you got nearly it a million. Got million yeah, yeah. It got stuck last at 9.20. I think I'm on 9.25 yeah, or something now. Yeah, you don't want to be fucking losing No, I'm not, that, I'm not yeah, losing yeah. that again. Well, that's the thing. I, I try and not do it on Instagram or write anything controversial on Instagram. Yeah. because Twitter's like, not as bad, is it? Nah, Glad you can get away Twitter's with all sorts right, on Twitter. I'll tell you what the worst one is. Facebook, mate. My Facebook athlete page, it's got about half a million followers on it and I don't know where they all come from on there mate but yeah. it's like all these mad Americans that are in like in Texas and all these places mate they they don't give a fuck them like, I have people threatening I'm gonna fly to England and shoot you and all sorts and like, these got a lot of fucking these lot are crazy what's wrong with them that lad so I, I love Yanks lad yeah, yeah. but you're yeah, nuts yeah, yeah. like Yanks oh, yeah. lad I yeah. love Yanks the boss the so friendly and that but lad the nuts yeah like 100% even lately lad watching Kevin Holland and um, have you seen Kevin Holland yeah, yeah. lately getting trolls in the yeah, gym yeah. lad yeah. do you actually turn up though yeah I know the mental Lad, I, I give people next gen's address on Twitter like once once a week or once a mm. month something saying, lad, see you at 10 in the morning. Yeah. Get down, see you at 10 in the morning. No one ever turns up. Ever. So he's actually turning up then, are Lad, they? Kevin Holland, for turning <laughs> up and sparring with Kevin Holland, lad. Fuck it. It's on like him? his YouTube and his TikTok and that, lad. Oh, they, they turn that. up and he just smashes a troll's head. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like some of them he's paid for their flight and like some of them he's put, got them down and just went, Sam, we'll video it. And like I think he gets them to sign like a non-disclosure agreement, no way they can't like that's fucking take him to court. I love that man. And he just muffed yeah. them, lad. I love that. I put a video up on my last. Well, not me. Well, not Mitch Chilson, the commentator for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did like a breakdown of my low kick, and there were a video of me demonstrating it. And the amount of people that came on there going, "That won't work properly in a fight. That's not effective." And I'm like, mate, do you understand how many people I have made? Yeah, that are put in a wheelchair. From you have, have made I've, quit. Yeah, I've made them quit. Some of the best fighters on the planet, and you're still saying it. What? Well, I just think, just come down. And let me just do it to you once. Just one full power kick, and you have to stand there and take it, and just see. You won't be able to get off of the toilet no, the next time you sit down for the toilet. They wouldn't be able to walk, lad. They wouldn't be able to walk nah. away. They wouldn't be able to drive home. They, they wouldn't be able to. Yeah, no, not like, they, people don't understand what it's like with a leg kick. It's funny because my boxing coach, as I mentioned before, Chris, we'll have a mess about, and if I like, just go boom. Yeah. Literally, my shin touches his leg. He's like, oh, lad. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't even kicked him. You yeah. know what I mean? He's like, oh, lad, oh, lad, literally. I'm like, lad, what's, what's up? He's like, stop kicking, lad. None of them yeah, kicks. Yeah, None yeah, of them yeah, kicks. Yeah. No, but people who aren't used to getting kicked, yeah. I always say it's my mate to say, lad, if you ever go and, have, and like you're having a street fight with someone and they leg kick you, just say, lad. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Shake his yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, just walk yeah, away. Yeah. That's it. If yeah, someone yeah. leg kicks your face, lad, you know how to fight. Yeah. So just 100%. say, you know what, lad? Just leave it there. Shake his hand and walk away. 100%. Did you see Molly kicking the lad from Barstool? No, I didn't see that. Have you not seen no, it? No, I've not seen oh, it. Oh, Jacob, get that up, lad. <laughs> lad, you want to see it. But it's like, she does an old back. Full on I mean? low kick. Yeah. <laughs> she got power as well. Lad. I'm Robbie Fox. This is Meatball Molly, and this is Spin of Baptist. Yeah, this is it. Watch this, lad. Oh! Give us a bit of sound if you can, <laughs> please, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> lad. Watch this, lad. Sorry, lad. Go, go, like, like it's funny. Oh, like, this play just listen to, yeah. listen to Molly. She's like, oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, she doesn't know what to say. Justin Gates, she does that to me. This is clearly my leg. <laughs> What's that? He's <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, his knee went run. Oh, you know, that's when it. Oh, oh you're right. Robbie, just a little bit. Oh. Oh, oh, is that oh, what she's kicking? Oh, my God. Robbie, where's the bar still? <laughs> he's the MMA correspondent for bar still. Oh, yeah. He had like a thing, spinning back right. kick. Oh. oh, spinning back kick got to a certain amount of followers. And like the next day, the next day, Canelo was fighting that Bivol or two days later and he went to press conference the next day and some, I, someone tweeted me who was at the press conference like a journalist saying, oh, I've just had to give Robbie me seat there. <laughs> Oh, but like, like you say, then if you're if you've never been kicked in the leg, yeah. you don't realise how bad that is. Yeah, you don't. You really Mate, don't. Honestly, I'd hate to fight like a low, like a low kicker because every time you plant your leg to punch, they'll kick your yeah. leg. Every time they, like you lose balance, they'll kick your leg. 
It's it's a fucking horrible, horrible. Even if you win, you know you're gonna be. Yeah, yeah you're not walking. Just you're gonna be in pain. The all next you gotta day. do is ask Rodlich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, yeah, he, could, yeah, he won the you, fight, but he couldn't walk. Yeah, exactly. Even if you win that fight, you are gonna be in yeah. fucking trouble for a few days. <laughs> you're not fighting for a few nah, for a few months. Put it that way. One hundred percent. One thing I did want to ask you, Liam, is because obviously they've went big in MMA now. Calf kicks. Yeah. Are they? So they've always been around in Muay Thai, but we stand different to MMA fighters. So our yeah, leg, you have that out a bit, so uh, you kick yeah. the calf. So like if you bone, try and kick it. like that, and then you just lift the leg a bit, mate, you're going to volley the knee calf. And it's just going to snap your so, fucking shin and ass. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think this, uh, you see a lot of leg breaks and stuff in MMA, and people are trying to kick like on the calf, and that's what's happening. They end up kicking knees, and the yeah. legs are just fucking splattering. But obviously, most MMA fighters ain't got the same chin conditioning type fighters. No, they haven't. You've got to work on wrestling, you've got to work on boxing, you've got to work on jits. Like on tie, tie, tie boxes, we just kick the pads. I was about to say, no. We do, uh, ten rounds of pads a day, kick the Are you bam, one of them, Liam? Can you just kick a metal pole? Rough, probably not anymore, mate. I've, got, <laughs> I've, got, I've split my shin about four or five times. Oh, lad, I've seen pictures yeah, on your Instagram yeah, where you've got yeah. a big split down the middle yeah. of your shin. Oh, lad. But, but when I lived in Thailand, every day we'd kick the heavy bag full of sand, do bap, bap, bap. And you build up resistance. So like now when I fight, if I kick someone hard straight on the shin, I don't really feel it. Yeah. But like you, MMA guys, they're not having the same shin conditioning because they've got to work on the wrestling, they've got yeah. to work on the boxing, they've got to work on different things. Just if they I... just kick the pads all day, every day, they'd have solid shins. But when I watch them videos, it's Ties like kicking palm trees and that, and yeah. just like, do you know them trees, them banana trees, and that that they kick down? They're actually not, no, bad. they're not that yeah, hard, yeah, yeah, but yeah. still, I wouldn't even be able to kick one of them. Yeah. Like, fuck that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I look at him, I'm like, wow, this kid's about 12, yeah, so, and he's kicking trees down, and yeah. like little me metal poles, he's kicking metal poles, mate. They built different ties, like, I've held pads for like a little eight year old tie when I were up when I was staying in Thailand, and that, and the, the foot it made when he would kick through the pads, and that the bones are just dense, they're, they're, all they do is drink milk and eat rice all the time. So they're just fucking full of calcium, and the bones, <laughs> the bones are just dense, mate. Honestly, yeah. they, they're, they're, their their skeletons are different to ours. I'm telling you, <laughs> they're just fucking heavy boned. It's ridiculous. But going back to the calf kicks, it's always been around in Muay Thai. But like, if, if you notice someone who's blocking up a bit like that, you'll aim for it because it's yeah. fuck, it's not nice getting kicked. But there. when they turn the foot out yeah, and start blocking with the shin, it's, it's different. a problem. Like I, I always just aim for it. It's a little bit safer. The, the times when I have split my shin when I've been fighting. That's because I've just misjudged it a little bit, kicked too long, and it has skimmed off the knee and they've just yeah. ripped the skin open. So as long as you judge the calf kick right, and if you got you gauge someone's lifting a leg straight up instead of out, go for it. Yeah. But I, if someone stood in that and they're there ready to block, I, I'd never, I won't go for it. Yeah, because our stances are a bit different, aren't they? Like we, yeah. we stand a little bit more like a boxer, yeah. but not as not as like low so we're not getting kicked yeah, all the exactly. time you've got to be ready for takedowns you've got to yeah. be ready for the other stuff so you're not like I say if you get it right it's fucking devastating yeah fuck it up even more devastating <laughs> even ready, more man. devastating mate yeah uh, one of my pet hates that is like that part of my foot there I always kick elbows oh lad. mate Ooh, lad, I've I'm done that a few times. no body kicking yeah, I'm yeah. always kicking elbows lad I've done that a few times you put your foot down yeah, <laughs> just start bouncing a little bit, yeah. move away for thirty seconds, then get back involved. Yeah, well, when I kick, I always try and if I'm gonna kick to the body, I always try and just go a little bit higher, so it's gonna go there On across the arm. The arm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to fucking kick that knee. Like saying in Thai, kicking's one of your main weapons as well. It's not like if I bust my foot up in first round, I can try and take him down or all. Yeah, I've got five more rounds. Well, three on one championship, but throughout my normal career, five more rounds of trying to fucking still score. Yeah, score points. Body kicks the highest score. I was about to say, that's the, the kicks the highest scores, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Kicks. Body kick, highest score. Sweeping, high score. Straight knees, high score. Punches score the least. Yeah, they're the least scorer, yeah, aren't they? unless you're rocking you them or dropping them yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's all based... It's all based on effect and dominance and stuff like that. So if I catch your kick and sweep you on floor, big effect. Yeah. If we're in clinch, I throw you down, big effect. If I push you back, land the big straight knee to your body and it folds you and it shows visible effect, yeah. big score. Stuff like that's how it's scored. Yeah, that is. It's good stuff like that. But as I say, I just think back to that kick on the back. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to swear that. I just go back to getting kicked in the back once and I'm just like, how'd I, how'd I lose that? <laughs> 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 but it's like it's the same with MMA lad. Things judge, some judges score things different to others. You know what I mean? Like that fight on the um that was just the weekend just gone, Valentina Shevchenko and Talia yeah, Santos. Yeah, yeah. Everyone seems to think Talia Santos won. Yeah. I haven't watched it, so I, I, I personally haven't watched don't it, know. but I've seen the split of yeah, what, everyone's, what's gone on and stuff like that. Uh, everyone's saying that they think she only won because of the headbutt, where like that was the most effective thing that landed, like they clashed heads. Yeah. But you don't, you don't know, lads. Like, that's what, like you say, everyone judges the fight. Everyone's got a different perception on stuff. Yeah. So like, so I'll see in Thai boxing. So if someone's just like on the back foot, throwing nice and light body kicks, and the other guy's walking forward, 
punching, but he's not kicking much, but the other guy's falling back all over. Although the other guy ain't kicking much, he's winning because he's showing effect. He's showing dominance, but there'll still be some judges who'll give it to the other guy yeah. just because he's body kicking. But like I say, it depends what you're looking for. In the end of the day, it should come down to it's a fight. Who was winning the fight? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Who Not was who was like, oh, who was lifting some body kicks up there. Who were fucking smashing him in? Who yeah. had him on the back foot? Who, were, who, had, who looked more aggressive? Who looked more dominant? Judge it like that. Yeah. Not, yeah. A lot of people talk now with like the MMA going like damage, damage, yeah. damage. You know what I mean? That's like one of the biggest things now. Like yeah. Damage that's, same as champions. Champions. Yeah, that's what they tell you to say. Yeah. Right. Say one, we want action. Two, we want to see damage. Three, we want to see ring control. Four, aggression. Five pushing yeah. forward, so they want you to fight. I think aggression's even higher in the UFC. Yeah. I think aggression's on like, higher on the judging criteria. I remember watching a fight not too long ago where one person was walking forward. In fact, it was mo it was two people. Molly had fought. Yeah, Molly had fought both of them, beat both of them, and the ch the Korean girl was just on the back foot, popping jabs out, catching the um, the zombie girl loads. But because the zombie girl was walking forward, she won a split decision. Yeah. But every, everyone seems to think that she lost every round. Yeah. Because the other girl was landing the like best shots. Just going back to that, what, what a judge is looking yeah. for. Every judge is looking for something different. Yeah. Really. Everyone's got their yeah. own personal preference yeah. on how they score a fight, aren't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? No one's like, oh no, it's got to be judged this way. Everyone has their own different ways of looking at things. Yeah. But. 100%. Like, that's why I used to like the way Pride used to score fights. Yeah, yeah. Just... Well, Pride was just really fucking sick, though, man. Yeah. When he could just stamp on her, <laughs> yeah. everything. It was class, wasn't it? But it was just, he judged the fight as a whole at yeah. the end of the fights. Like, I I, I half hate the 10, 10, 10 point must score system. Yeah, yeah. Like, it works a lot better for Ty. Yeah. I don't think it works that well for MMA person. Nah, like, I think in a, so in one championship, Ty fights, they're the 10 point must. Every round is scored, but the MMA fight is scored as a whole. Yeah, yeah. With, I think that does work. work I think well I think it's me. like the Asian way. I think that's just yeah, the way they've yeah. always done it. Yeah, I think is. also with like the American legislation and that, they have to have like a different type of criteria. Yeah, but of course, of course. I like the old style, me. But some people like they keep talking about having open score and now as well, don't they? Yeah. Would you like that? I don't know. I'm not sure how I'd feel about it. Do I know it's a, it's a mixture of both, isn't it? Because yeah. imagine you know you're winning a fight, and then they sell everyone you're winning a fight, and the other kid comes out to try and fucking take your head off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I, I'm not sure how I feel about for, for MMA, I don't know. For Ty, I, I, I don't think it's broke with Ty, to be honest. Especially in the MMA gloves, because not many fights go distance anyway. Yeah. No one's always, the, he's always a clear winner. Yeah. It's easy to see because there's so much damage that gets done in the men, MMA gloves that it's fucking. It's not, you don't really get too many close fights that go down a wire. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you get two fighters who are a bit scared to engage because they're a bit both a bit worried about it. Those fights, they're harder to judge. Yeah, that there's they're few and far between, though. To be fair, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but especially like, in Muay Thai. Yeah, as I say, yeah. lad, they, <laughs> I love watching Muay Thai because they just come forward and bang. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, like, I said, like we said earlier as well, that the amount of elite level guys in one championship, there's no easy fights. They're all the best stand up fighters in the planet, and you've just shoved the four rounds gloves on them all. <laughs> it's going to be fucking. He was all wearing eights and sends the yeah, other week. Yeah. <laughs> All in eights and tens. Now we've just put fours on them. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. And everyone's like, oh, well, fucking, let's just swing my arms around as hard as I can in these then. It's class. Uh, you do. It feels mad when you put them on, though, done at the fours. Even like, even though I've always fought on them, it's still like when I put the UFC gloves on, it's like, I don't know, to punch so someone I, in the head. I wore, when I, the first time I fought in Japan, I was 17. And I think I fought 59 kilos, so 130, 130 pounds. And because I was under... 60 kilos. It was like six sixes. ounces. Yeah. So they put these sixes on me, six ounce Mex uh, Mexico Reyes or what, so Cleto Reyes. Put them on me. I was like, fucking hell. I knocked the guy out in round three. And then I went back again, but we thought he'd moved up weight a little bit. So we fought at 135 and they put eights on me and I was devastated. I thought, oh, uh, devastated. And I knocked him out again, even in the <laughs> eights. But in the eights, I brought my hand. Oh, good. You broke your hand in the eights after six? Eights. Yeah, yeah. I hit, him, I hit, him on, hit him on his temple and I brought my hand. But yeah, the first time I went there and I put them on me, I was like, oh my God. And I, I was getting a bit carried away in round one and he fucking hit me with a straight start point. I remember he hit me with a straight left and it fucking buds me. I thought, yeah, I better fucking calm down a bit. Because, <laughs> chill out a bit. Yeah, I better chill out a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, when the, the first time they put them on me, after fighting in eights, going to sixes, I'm like, oh my God. And I'll never forget that. But then going back to eights and then coming down to the fours, that were fucking shot to the yeah, system yeah yeah well like <laughs> that first fight that fight with rod like i was kick your leg kicking him a lot because i thought if i because he's a he's, he is known for just walking forward hard puncher yeah hard leg kicker similar style to me 
And I thought, if I just smash his leg and get rid of the... He won't be able, won't to, be able forward, to just that, walk yeah. forward and box me in, in them fucking little gloves because, like I said, I'd had the knee surgery before. I was still trying to work shit out in them little gloves. Yeah. But then before I knew it, I'd got fucking put on my ass from a punch. So I just had to get up and throw caution at wind and then go go crazy in it. That's the only thing with the four ounce gloves in it half stops people from kicking as much because they know that you can just right sight down the pipe or yeah. left sight down the pipe. Yeah, it mean? does. Or you'll just be happy to take the kick. Yeah. Bum, punch yeah, right yeah. down the middle. Yeah, exactly. Whereas under eight ounce rules, if you get kicked, you're going to have to kick back because you need to get your score back. Yeah. So like putting them little gloves, you'll be happy to take three or four kicks and you think, oh, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking hit yeah, down yeah. the middle and drop you with a shot. Yeah, exactly. So when when is the next fight? September? Yeah, so my next fight's for, for title against Nongo and that's September 17th. And uh, How yeah. many fights has that madman had then? Like? <sighs> Probably 300 plus. So there's, from this generation of Muay Thai fighters, the two best fighters, Sanchai's obviously number one, Nongo's number two. Yeah. Uh, I fought Sanchai three times, obviously didn't get the decision. But... um. Yeah, I've watched two of them though. Some yeah. of them are sick. Yeah, some, some of the stuff that you're had... you're doing to yeah. each other and they're just like yeah. you wouldn't see that in any other fight. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like it's half like you're playing with each other at the same time as trying to fight. So the first mean? time I fought Sanchai, I was 21 and they brought him over. I'd maybe just turned 22. And they brought him over to England and he he wasn't really fighting any other Westerners at the time because there weren't many for him to fight because he did just wipe floor of them all. So they brought him over and I got sort of sucked into his game of like because he would a tie, you were trying to control the pace, keep yeah. it a bit slower, kicks and sweeps. And now I did well early doors, but I lost round four pretty big and he just cruised in round four. The second fight, I thought, you know what? I'm not getting stuck in the gym. I just thought, fuck this. I'm having it. I just, fuck yeah. <laughs> I cut him with an elbow. I was sweeping him. I was throwing him on the floor. I was landing boxing combinations. And I Where didn't... was this fight? In Doncaster. Dawn, Doncaster, this one, yeah. yeah. They brought him over a year again. And I didn't realise how fucking tough he was because he, got no... he was known for being... Technically the best, really good left kick, sharp boxing and stuff like that. He was known for all these things, but I didn't realise how hard he actually was because I fucking I hit him with some rockets on his chin. I cut him right over an eye of his elbow in midway through round three, so he couldn't really see in round three, couldn't really see in round four, but he still found a way just to nick it yeah. on points. Um, so I was gutted after that fight because I thought, fuck me, I literally tried everything then. I just I can't beat this guy. He's, he's elite. The third fight, they asked me to go back and fight him again. I thought, right, what can I try that I haven't tried this time? <laughs> and was that in the UK again? Or was no, that abroad so this, time? this was in Macau. Macau, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like a dickhead, I flew over to Thailand only a week before. And then they flew me to Thailand. And I thought, I'd been, that, been out, of, out of England for like seven days, not acclimatized. Didn't realize we were fighting outside. So wow, first the two heat. rounds again, I've done all right. Round three, I started going... <laughs> <laughs> And I, he noticed, and he just he just fucking schooled me for the rest of the time. Mate, I was I can I remember getting trying to get a breath. I went, and my lungs just opened up that much. I thought, fuck me. I thought, eh? And I tried to get, and I was sitting down in the corner going, Richard, I fucked me. I fucked. <laughs> I couldn't get my breath at all. So like f- Mr. Weezy, I've yeah, story. Mate, I was, mate. I like I just smoked f- a fifty deck before I got in <laughs> ring, mate. It was scandalous. And I remember sat down and around four, and Richard went, "You need to knock him out." I went, "I know, but I'm fucked." I said, "I can't." Do it. I said, I can't even get it's my hands up, mate. Difference in the heat, innit? Yeah. It is. When yeah. I even like I've never done like a camp or nothing in Thailand, but yeah. I went and saying there, and it's just difference in yeah, the heat. Mate, it is. It's when you step off the, the you step off the plane. Yeah, it just whoosh, just hits you the like humidity. That weird smoggy yeah. fucking you are breathing in polluted air. <laughs> I'm sure when I lived there on a the morning when I was running around that park, it would do me more damage than good, mate. Because it's just polluted, especially in Bangkok. Yeah, Bangkok. It's polluted terrible. as fuck. Terrible. It's it's horrible. But like And is that where you were staying? Were you staying in Bangkok? Yeah, yeah. So when I, I when I lived to Thailand, lived in Thailand, I moved there when I was 19. Um and it was because I got battered off a tie. I'd, I'd won 29 pro fights. I'd gone 29 pro fights, unbeaten, knocked quite a lot of them out. Beat quite a lot of good Europeans. I beat a couple of good ties and knocked them out. And these were good ties, but they weren't yeah. elite ties. So I fought this tie when I were just before I was eighteen, just before I turned nineteen, and he were a former stadium champion, still real top level, like proper elite level tie. And in round two, he stepped forward and I went bang, left hook, dropped him like a sack of shit, and I thought. Oh, gonna finish him he'll get up and i'll finish him same as everyone else don't know what i'll fucking oh big commotion more about this guy he got up and he didn't have a gum shield in he had blood all over his teeth and he smiled at me and went like that and i thought oh shit what have i done here <laughs> <laughs> for shit for usually the dog get up like that but he bounced up and then bell went 
We didn't round even two. have a gummy in either. Didn't, mate, he had blood all over his teeth. And he looked at me like that, he went, huh? Look, these tie fighters yeah. are nuts. Mate, honestly, I didn't half whack him with that left hook as well. He, he, like Undertaker, he went boom, and boom, straight back up. <laughs> and I thought, oh, shit. So then round three, mate, I swear to you, he came out and he fucked me up. Round three, four, and five, he absolutely battered me, took me into clinch, elbowed me, cut me, threw me down. He need me so bad in my, my bladder and round the back of my kidneys. I was pissing blood for a few days and everything. Whoa, Honestly, I, I was fucking b badly battered. So then I thought, right, what do I do here? I can either just stay fighting at the level I'm at, keep beating up these Europeans, pad out my record. I can fucking retire 80 and one loss if I wanted to. Or do I want to fucking be elite and I want to yeah, fight to with these guys? And, and obviously that's what I wanted to do. So I thought, how do I do that now? I thought I'm doing all right over here. If I want to take me sound right out of my comfort zone, go over there, learn how they do it, fight how they fight, add that style to my style and get like a bit of a hybrid style yeah. going on. Um, I didn't want to go out and fight like a tie because of my strongest weapons, punching and low kick. It's more yeah. of a Western, Western style, but I thought if I can score how they do, if I can play the game like they do, if I can clinch like, like obviously not clinch like them, but if I can nullify their clinch, stop them using their best weapons. Yeah. And yeah, so I went out there and uh, when I went 19, uh, I had fucking had a bird at time and stuff, and I said, "Listen, I'm out. I'm sorry." So <laughs> I, 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 I did. I'm sorry. Honestly, later. Mate, this fight was in November, start of November, and by the, the start of December, I'd already met my mind up that I was going. Yeah. And my mum was fuming because it was Christmas coming up. I'm my cart fucking. I, I, it had done my head in that badly yeah. that I'd been not the fact that I'd just lost, but the fact that I'd just got battered and it had fucking. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. So I went out there, start of December. I remember I fought on New Year's Eve out in Thailand as well. So I got my first fight and I, I won three or four in a row. And then what I started doing when I was betting on myself, I've told this story a few times on that. On nice stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was betting on myself and that because at the time, I, I, I wasn't getting paid much to fight. I want a big name. And out there, you've got to start from scratch and yeah. work your way up. So if I wanted a bit of extra money to pay me rent and stuff, I had to bet. And then it came to a point where one time I bet on myself and I fucking lost, lost all my rent money. And I had no money to pay my rent, no money to pay the gym and stuff like that. Oh, no. I had to fight again four days later. So three days later, I flew down to Phuket. I was fucked from the fight. Imagine I battered your shins yeah. after a five round time. Yeah, your legs fight. are battered, love. Mate, so I had to fight again. So I said to the gym owner, I said, fucking hell. Cause he came up to me afterwards cause he'd bet on me as well. So he wasn't happy at all. And he was like looking at me in disgust. He went, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to have to fight again, aren't I? He went, yeah, I've already organised it. I went, fucking great. So <laughs> Did I you win that one? Yeah, I won Good, that one. Yeah. That one. Like, <laughs> he took me down to one of the islands. He took me down to Phuket and the fighters down there are as strong as the Bangkok lot. Yeah. So I was living in Bangkok and I was, I was fighting like the good level fighters in Bangkok and stuff like that. Is that where the best fights that, are yeah, still so to the, this the day? All the stadiums in Bangkok, yeah. even still now, COVID killed it a little bit, like, but still now Bangkok is the mecca. Yeah. Down Phuket and places like that. There's good gyms down there, don't get me wrong. But if you're gonna fight down in Phuket, it's usually like island fighters. They're not as they're not as hungry. Yeah. They're doing it for a little bit of money. They're not doing it to reach the the top light. So after the Bangkok fight, which was in Rajaramnern Stadium, like big stadium, big fight, a lot of money changed hands there and then. Look, it was fucking so close the fight in and I lost because in round three he stepped and I went bang left hook and his legs wobbled all over. So I've rushed in to finish him. And I've gone up a cut hook and I've thrown my right hand, he's thrown a knee at the same time and it hit me straight in the chest and it took everything from me. I didn't go down or anything like that. My punches lost the sting. And then when I went back to the corner, I sat down and my trainer went, why don't you finish him? I went, I said, I couldn't fucking breathe. Yeah. I said, I couldn't breathe. And then in round four, when I went back out, although I was ahead, my, my shots had just lost that bit of sting in him. So he just scored a few more body kicks and stuff like yeah. that. And then he went on back foot and protected his lead. And it, that knee hit me moving round four, it just fucked me. I just lost everything. And that's why I lost the fight, lost all the money. And like you say, when you're fighting these guys at that level, it's fucking a game of like, not even inches, it's fucking millimeters. Yeah, you make really one is. tiny mistake yeah. like that. Same as in your game, mate. If you make one tiny Let's mistake, you, you get your foot in the wrong place oh, yeah, somewhere, you your hands the wrong place, yeah, you're that's it. Yeah. You're, you're asleep. And like with the scoring, how they do it, and I was still getting used to how they scored it over there. Obviously, I'd had 30 pro fights in England. And I was still getting used to the tie way, like I said before, that, that time when I got me back to the lady boy thing. That. And then I, in, if that fight was in England, that one when he hit me with a knee, I'd have still won because I, round, I won round one, two, and three. I lost round four, and then round five, he protected the win of round four. But over there, one and two don't really count. Yeah, it's four and five of the main rounds, aren't they? Three, four, five, three, really. Four, five. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's round four, they call round four the money round. So if a fight's close, say if I've just won round three, but then he wins round four, he will go on the back foot in round five and protect his lead. Yeah. And as long as you, as long as he doesn't get caught with anything massive or doesn't get wobbled or anything like that, he'll win every time. When I trained, I only went to, well, I went to a few different gyms, but once I went to one gym one day, it was only Costa Mui, a yeah. little gym in Costa Mui. And um, I sparred at this tie. And I swear to God, I had a, you know, the heartbeat sensor. Yeah, yeah. I had one of them on. And he kicked her off my chest every <laughs> round. Like every round, he'd just teep her off my chest. <laughs> I was thinking every time he kicks, I'll just step in and punch because I was trying to use my boxing against him. And lad, every single time I'd step in, he'd just teep me in the chest. There is nothing more humbling than when just you, getting when you go to, to Thailand yeah. and you spar <sighs> with an experienced Thai. Mate, there were fucking kids when I first, the first time I ever went, there were little, like, must have been 12, 13 year olds throwing me on the floor in the clinch and stuff. It was humiliating. <laughs> yeah. It was humiliating, mate. Which is another reason why I thought, you know what, I need to get me sent out of my comfort zone and go over there. And when I went over there at first, I had no respect from any of the ties because they didn't know who I was. Yeah. So when they were in the gym on the morning, they'd wait for me to like, what the ties used to do as well. Everyone thinks like they, they run 10 kilometers every morning and that. I've seen elite level stadium fires run to the park run round once, which is 3K, get a bottle of water from Waterstall, pour it over the red and walk back to the gym and say they've done 10K. So I, <laughs> on a morning, I were doing my 10K, running back to the gym, tired. They were fresh and they go, oh, come on, Liam, sparring. Come on, Liam, clinching. And they just batter me every yeah. day. And it was fucking, it, it, it was mentally draining getting that every day. But after a few months, when I'm, I started winning my fights, getting a bit more experience, I started to get as a bit no i started to level it up a little bit and by the time i left after two years like even with the top level guys i were up there with them i already yeah. been home with them but it was fucking it was mentally mentally draining and tough knowing getting up every morning if i'm gonna get battered again today <laughs> I, you know what i mean even by so oh, fucking hell i'm gonna get thrown all over i'm gonna get beat up and then even some of the older fighters who were like in the mid 30s and they're retired and they're just trainers they'd still had 300 fights. So when it comes to sparring, they'd jump in. And although they won't be, although they're not, they weren't as fit as they were in the prime, They've still, they're still sharp yeah. as fuck, mate. And they've still got all this experience. And I was getting beaten up by old retired fighters. And at the time, these guys they're were like my age now. Demoralising as fuck at the time. So at the time I'm thinking, what's going on here? This guy's retired. But then I realised how good these actually were in the prime yeah. and stuff. And then... At the time, like you said, I just wanted to fucking cry. I remember one time I did actually cry as well. I'm not, I do not even have any shame in it. <laughs> I was training for a world title fight. So it was WP, WP, PMF title in Thailand, which were a decent world title yeah. at the time. And it was my fourth or fifth fight since I've been there. Won them all. Did right put him in for this world title. I fight in it, it, I'd watched the Japanese guy who also lived in Thailand win the title like a month before. Big, strong, and I'd moved up from 135 to 140 to fight him. So he was big, strong, only clinching. That's all he liked to do, walk forward and clinch. So they had me, like, every day after I'd kick my pads, I'd do boxing pads, I'd hit the bargain, and then they'd have me clinching, like, fucking 50, 60 minutes for an hour, all changing partners and fucking, you know, like, shark tanking yeah. me. And dinner was at 7 p.m. every night, training finished at 6. And from the ring, you can see where everyone's eating the dinner. It was 10 to 7. I'd been training since 3 p.m. And it's still the, the Thai trainer called Rajasak. He still had me in the ring, clinching me, throwing me on the floor, getting up, putting one pad there, making me knee it, punching me with because he had a boxing glove on him, yeah. body shotting me. And, I, I, and then it got to 7 o'clock and I thought, right, it's four hours. Surely this is it now. I looked over and everyone were eating the dinner and I'm fucking, two of them were like drinking beers and stuff. <sighs> and he went, right, come on, 15 more minutes. And a, a tear ran down my face, mate. And I was so fucking just-, just, you know, just Mentally mad. and physically yeah. drained. Yeah, I, was, I just had nothing, <laughs> like, Ian Beald, I called it, mate. I had nothing left. As I said, I said, oh, Beald, mate. Ian Beald. <laughs> if that tied a new moment, I said, mate, I'm Beald, mate, I'm Beald. Honestly, mate, a tear ran down my face. And when he saw it, he just went, okay, good training, go on. It was fucking, I was, uh, that was the closest I'd ever come in my life to like being like broken and just saying, no, yeah. I'm fucking not doing it anymore. Oh, four but, uh, hours I'll, though. I'll, I'll, mate, I've when never... you look back at that now, that was pretty mate, stupid to say. No, mate, it's, the ties don't have no fucking, they'll make you kick pads for fucking 10 rounds and this and that. There's no, I know the t training in Thailand is great, but none of it's sport specific. Yeah. Running 10K every morning, really slow around the park. I'm not doing all of them fucking your knees up. <laughs> it, it, mate, I, I, I stopped running, right? Five, four years ago, because my knees were fucked. I don't run at all anymore. I'm more explosive, faster, sharper, stronger than ever. I mean, fitness is still the same. Yeah. 
I'll just do sport specific stuff like in, in Thai boxing, you don't fight at a steady pace running around a park like that. No, it's a you're fucking, fighting it's bursts. A non-stop, yeah. So I do like bursts on my walk hill bike, sprints and hill stuff sprints like that. on the treadmill yeah. twice a week, ski erg, not a ski machine, yeah. I do stuff like that. that, that which do the batters with that. 20 that on 10 off, nasty, 20, oh, nasty bit of kit, that is mate. nasty. So I do stuff like that because you're fighting in bursts. Yeah. And I'm still fitter and stronger. The only fucking difference is now I pick up more injuries because my body's older, but I'm still fitter and stronger and sharper. And my, my stamina is just as good as when I was in my 20s. Yeah. I wish I'd have replaced it then because otherwise I've had, because my left knee's fucked. I've had to have my meniscus taken out. I've had a few, a few operations on it. I've just had stem cell treatment on it last year, which is... I was about to, I was just ask you about lad, everyone loves the stem cell team yeah, and lately yeah. everyone's raving about it. Has it worked, yeah? Well, so I went to see the surgeon who operated on my knee the first time and I've, I said like, right, where are we? And he looked at me and my right report and went, right, you need to retire. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you the fuck. To... I said, mate, I've come to you for advice. I said, do something to it. <laughs> he, went, he, went, he went, so listen to this. He said, he came up with some mad fucking thing. He went, oh, I can do what I do with some rugby players who come in. I can re-break your leg and it might like give you a bit of a thing and it'll take the weight off your knee. I don't want you to re-break my fucking leg, <laughs> mate. I said, I'm coming here for some advice. Got up, I stormed out of office. I'm thinking, fuck me. So I went to my sport doctor, who I always got to see. Uh, and he was like, get stem cell. And I'm like, have you had it? He went, yeah. He said, because he was a fell runner, you know, running up and down hills yeah, and yeah. shit. So he said, my knees were fucked. He said, like, he said, I got stem cell. And he said, I'm a 55 when I got it. He said, and I'm still out on my bike running. I can still run 10K, no problem. He said, it, it's worked a treat for me. He said, because you're younger and you've got healthy stem cells. It'll work even better. It'll work even better. Yeah. I went, oh, yes. I, I remember Joe Rogan had said to me when I was on his podcast, I remember he talked to me about it. So I messaged Joe and he said, get it, 100%, get it. And I thought, well, it's fucking expensive. It better work. And I went to uh, Alga Cells down in London. Like they're the only person in people in England who do yeah, it. Yeah, I was about to say everyone I've said of all UFC athletes are all in America getting it done. Yeah, yeah. I think Tills had it done yeah, on his yeah. knee. Honestly, mate. So I went down. I had a consult consultation with his doctor, and he was like, "Yeah, I think we can get." He said he looked at me MRI report and stuff. He said, "Yeah, it's in pretty bad shape." He said, "But you're young, you're healthy. I think we can get 60, 70 percent improvement on your knee." And it will basically it will probably on about minus five. So sixty percent upwards for me is. It's massive. Yeah. It's massive because there's stuff I can do to work around it. Like I said, I don't run anymore anyway. And uh, yeah, so it, what I did was I'd started doing a program. Have you ever seen Knees Over Toes guy on Instagram? Nah. So he's this guy, mate, who just gives you loads of mad exercises. He's got nearly a million followers, I think. He's like really, really big. He's like, he saves people's knees. Yeah. Without them having to have surgery. So he, what he does is he'd give me this program called Knees Over Toes guy where it was strengthening all the muscles around here, like exercises I'd never yeah. done before, like heel raises and stuff. and To help in, all the muscles around, around you need to make that to stronger. Stop the absorb, yeah. I'm not absorbing the, the on there because obviously I had no meniscus, so it was just bone on bone. So I did that for like a month. I'd booked my in for this, we're in about July. Did that for a month since August. My stem cell was in October. And I thought, you know what? Fuck this. I can get a fight in before I do this. I thought, <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought, I'll just beat someone with one leg. I don't care. I thought, it's been a while. COVID had fucked it for... Yeah, it fucked the whole for world up, didn't months. it? Yeah. And I thought, I need to have a fight. I thought, I can't have stem cell. And then have another three month fucking recovering. And then I said, oh, I'm get, I thought, right, I'm having a fight. So I messaged Richard. I said, right, get me a fight. And then Muay Thai Grand Prix, who were like one of the biggest promotions in the UK, they said, right, we've got this guy for you. You can fight. So I spent all that time building my legs up. I thought, it's only three rounds. I'd get away with it. I won the fight uh, pretty convincingly. And then next day I went and I got it done. And I'll tell you something, it was one of the most... I thought it was going to be going... What, did he not put you to sleep? Oh, mate. They thought, I've got, I'll show you on my phone afterwards. So the not asleep, mate, the drill into the your spine, your, like your lumbar down there, the suck your bone marrow out... Your bone marrow goes off to the lab into this machine and gets spun and they get all the goodness out of your bone marrow and then they inject it into your leg. But like when you're going into your spine, right, you know, it's like a, a corkscrew that they're you doing. Wasn't, and you wasn't asleep. Nah, mate. So the guy said to me, I said to the guy, I said, is this going to fucking hurt me, mate? Because I thought you got put to sleep for this. <laughs> he went, nah, we can't put you to sleep because we need to spin you around and inject your knee and then you need to move around while it all gets in there. Oh, I'm like, what that's, the I fuck? thought you were mate, I just put I'll show you after. So you lie down on your front, they get this fucking corkscrew, the corkscrew into like your, your spine pelvis bone down here, and you go deep into your bone to get the bone marrow out. So the guy said to me, he went, 
How does that feel? I went, it just, just feels fucking weird, mate. And it, it's, you can, they've got it in your back, but you can like feel, feel them, it. Like, oh, 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 it's so that weird. That sounds so bad. And then, honestly, oh. I'll show you after. And then they suck the bone marrow out of you. Then that goes off to the lab for like an hour and they spin it and get all the goodness out of it. And they come back with like an hour later and then inject it straight into your knee. And then you go back the next day for all your PRP injections to strengthen your ligaments around it. And then for about a month after I was just in agony, and I'm thinking, this hasn't fucking worked. This have fucking, what a waste of time. A month later. But was that at all growing back around or something? Yeah, yeah. Making yeah, it I better? Think, I, think, I can't believe it. I've just wasted fucking eight grand or whatever it was here. And then a month later, flying, mate. Absolutely Mad flying. And that, you know yeah. what, mate? My knee used to balloon up all the time and stuff. No, it's swelling. Hasn't bloomed up once. And this was seven, eight months ago now. And it, uh, and I've, I've fought Mad, since. And literally on the last podcast, I was talking to Andy Grant about it. Like, the me like how much medical... Like the hospitals have come on the past like well, but that, 20, go, 30 years. Going back to that, that's why I think that surgeon went, you need to retire. Stem cell won't work because he knows with shit like this, he's not going to have a fucking job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right so there. He's, he's old that's school. That's what I mean. No, a, doctor, a doctor should never say to someone, exactly. No, that's yeah. never going to. A doctor should always have a little belief in them. Oh, listen, you could do this or you could exactly. do that. Exactly. No, no, especially never the way should... medic medicines and science and everything yeah, growing all the time. They never should say to someone, like, I, I, there's a lad in Liverpool, he was in a crash years ago, Zach, and a doctor told him he'll never walk again. Yeah. And and he's done like a marathon and that since. Yeah, there you know go, what I mean? Like walking and and honestly, the fucking doctors talk shit, man. Yeah, proper it's shit, lad. Proper shit. I only started running in lockdown, me. I never used to run at all. Yeah. At all. But I know what you mean. I do a lot of sports specific yeah. SNC. Like everything I do now is sports specific. Like the only reason I'll run is for like me mental. Yeah. And that's what I like. A little bit of weight. That's what I liked about fat. running, just getting out on road in my own thoughts. Yeah. And going for it. I just have me tuned. I'm, yeah. I'm jogging that on the road. Yeah. Like that yeah. rap and like just the words yeah. just come out. Well, I can't help it. People I'll, are like, oh, what's he up to? Yeah. So I, I, I did, I've never, it wasn't like a chore for me running. Like, yeah. I, I had Andy. And Andy never ran his whole career. He hated running, never did it. If I realised what damage I was probably doing to my legs, I wouldn't have done it as much. But I still might have done it like, tw like twice a week. I was literally yeah. doing it 10K every day as well as my tyre boxing training and stuff like that. That's not sports specific whatsoever. No, definitely not. No. I've, that kind of with me. I've ran four out of the last five days, I think. Yeah. But that's just where I'm like, I'm, start, I'm starting to think, yeah, get the weight down yeah, a little bit yeah, more. The, these little extra sessions, they don't do much. They're just a little bit... Um, just like it's not like I'm killing myself to do these sessions like hill sprints. It's yeah. just it's just an, like an act of recovery, I think yeah, for me. Yeah. But I, I enjoy them now. I never used to, but I do now. <laughs> but uh, like just before we finish off, tell everyone where to find you, Liam. Like all your social medias and tell them about your own podcast. Yeah, oh, yeah. So we've got our podcast that we run. I haven't done it for a while because I've been in a bit of a, a tough fight camp, and I've got another big fight coming up. But it's called Kicking It with Liam Harrison. Uh, it's good for like the Thai boxing community, and we get a few other different guests on there as well. Uh, my socials are uh, Liam Badco on Instagram. Uh, so drop me a follow. My, my next fight's going to be in September for the one championship title. And I've also got my own training website. So if you want to uh, learn a bit of Muay Thai and learn some sweeps and some nasty leg kicks, www.liamharrisontraining.com. Oh, I've got to mention this for Schoolie as well. www.liamharrisonmerch.com because we've got loads of 60, 60 shirts and shit on there as well. Nice, that. Just make sure if you if you get on there, don't start commenting. That won't work. Yeah. That won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking watch it and do as you're told. You know what I mean? Do as you're told and it'll be good. So what date is that title fight? So it's uh, 17th of September. 17th yeah, of September. 17th. They've got the new deal with uh, Amazon Prime now in America. Which is fucking massive. Yeah, that's yeah, massive. So massive. what, it's on Amazon Prime in America yeah, now? That's yeah. quality, Yeah, that. exactly. It's big for all, like, Thai boxers have never been able to get paid, like, and we are getting paid yeah, now. Yeah, starting to get paid now, thanks to yeah, one. Yeah, I waited my whole career for big paydays like that. Don't get me wrong, it was decent. But, like, this Not is fucking, what it is now. Yeah, man. This is, this I got, is I got $100,000 bonus last fight for that, yeah. that fight. That, that, I could never have fucking dreamed of getting that. Like, the boat, lad. When they, when they say the bonuses, you're just like, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly, mate, honestly. Well, I was sat there, after me, <laughs> fight, I thought, surely that's worth 50 grand. Yeah. Surely it's worth 50 grand. And then it went... Hundred grand away, fucking hell! <laughs> I just swear, I love the bonuses. Yeah. I'm, I go into fights now just for bonuses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I go into fights. I think I'm gonna knock you out yeah, or, yeah. or submit the way you I fight, and take your dough. Yeah, the way I fight, it's tailor made for it, yeah. mate. Because there's always there some madness there going there. on. Oh, it, lad, so. You're never in a boring yeah, fight. You yeah. know what I mean? Ever. Yeah. But uh, Liam, thank you very much for mate, coming on. I appreciate me, that, lad. I'll have to repay the favour in the future. Yeah, after, yeah, definitely. Mate. I need to come down and get some training anyway. I've been speaking to Joe a lot. You know what I mean? Need to get down and get some training. Next time you're there, we'll. Get 100%. some work in the gym and then we'll go to the podcast studio. Thank you very much. Everyone, that's the end of the episode. Thank you for watching, people. As always, lots of love from the baddie.